Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome to this video. This is Jan from Programming Knowledge and this is part 11 of our PWA video tutorial series. And from the previous tutorial, we have a problem with the other request. So for, exam uh, for example, if we navigate away from our app shell, we should be able to get the resources also so for example the css files the font uh, any icons uh, we are you know trying to request for our application to work so basically as you can see here we have um, an error for this particular um, item right here which is the font icon for material icons right here so uh, we will add this later on into our um, cache but for now let's just focus on the uh, problem at hand now currently we're setting the application as offline right here um, if we refresh this we should still be able to see the app shell okay of our application now if we go to the other pages so for example uh, let's go to the about section and we will get this particular page so this site can't be reached so that means that we haven't added we haven't added this particular request into our cache so in order for us to do that or in order for us to add that into our cache just like what we have here for our app shell and even if our application is offline currently should be able to see the um, you know css the styles the structure of our application now we could do the same for example for our about section so we could save this particular request and then we should you know be able to see this particular page even if our application is offline now let's go back to the ide and try to implement that so uh, in here we will try to limit also the size of our cache by using um, introducing another um, function so in here let me just add that particular function so this will be cache size limit function so basically what we want is to delete the older versions of the cache and then um, make use of the new version of the cache so that's the purpose of this particular function so const and then limit cache size equals to a function and then name and then the size as the parameter and then open and close curly braces and right here we're gonna open the cache so that will be caches and then open and we're gonna use the name of our um, cache specified by our parameter okay so name we're gonna open that particular cache and then we're gonna tuck in the then method okay or function and um, we're gonna add open and close parentheses or I mean curly braces right here and in here we're gonna specify the cache there you go and in here we need to return all the keys inside our cache so basically we're gonna call the function keys and then tag in the then function and then open and close curly braces right here and inside here we're gonna specify the keys of our cache so basically what we're trying to do is get all the keys so the key will will serve as the name of our cache for example 
um, I'm gonna you know explain that later on uh, inside a browser but for now let's just continue writing this particular uh, function okay so we're gonna check here if keys that length is greater than the size or the specified size here as the parameter and then we're gonna have to add the curly braces and then what, what we will do is try to delete the keys open and close and then keys and then zero um, right after that we're gonna have to add in the then function and then we're gonna call again the limit cache uh, function so basically this will try to reiterate okay if we have this particular um, you know if we have the if we have successfully deleted this particular key and of course if the keys that land is greater than size so if it is not greater than the specified parameter size then it will not delete the cache that we have inside our browser okay so we may need to um, remove this and then add it here okay same with our keys right here and put it right here there you go so basically this particular function as i've said is just to limit the size of our cache because we don't want to overload our browser with old caches that we don't want to use inside our application so that's why we need to to call this function later on inside our fetch because inside our fetch we're trying to save caches right so in here we're checking if the request um, matches an item inside our cache then return that particular cache resource otherwise return the request there you go but what we could do is instead of returning the request what we could do is fetch call in the, the fetch function right here and then tag it the then method or function and then fetch this is the fetch resource Okay, and in here we're gonna have to open the dynamic cache so that will be caches and then open um, dynamic do we have a dynamic cache name right here so const um, dynamic cache we're calling this dynamic because we don't really know um, any other assets that we're going to save right here as opposed to the cache name that we have here because we know all the assets that we're trying to request okay and all these assets com uh, you know um, make up the application shell of our PWA so what we have here is to add a dynamic cache name dynamic cache name yeah and what we, what we could um call it like um, dynamic cache v1 okay and then we could use this particular const right here we're gonna open that particular cache and then the then method 
and then cache. Open and close curly braces. And then we could say cache that put and then we're gonna have to get the request url okay and then fetch uh, resource that clone so we're using clone right here because we don't have any access later on uh, if we return this directly so that's why we need to add this particular function that clone right here okay so and then right here we're gonna add the function limit cache size and then we're gonna specify the dynamic cache name and of course we want to save like 15 items or 15 resources inside our dynamic cache so again the purpose of this is to save only 15 resources okay you could make it 10 or 8 or 5 it depends on your preference so let me show you that so for example we want to make this 5 so there should be you know only 5 items inside our dynamic cache there you go and then after this will be return and then the um, resource okay and um, right after the um, right after this we have the then method or function what we could do is tag in also the catch method if uh, something goes wrong or went wrong with our uh, operation above then we could have this particular um, logic right here so event and then we're going to use the request and then url so we're going to check if the request is that html so for example the request is for example um, about that html and then something went wrong with the request then we're gonna have to return a default um, page so that will be greater than negative one so meaning um, the request contain this particular extension the that html so we're gonna have to return caches and then match and we're gonna have to specify the default page so that will be pages uh, forward slash default dot html okay and i think we have uh we don't add we didn't add that here inside our assets so let me add that we're gonna add the page pages pages and then slash default that html and inside our default we could change this so for example yeah we have here you cannot view this page offline and then uh, we add here an option to go to the home page of our app which is index.php so let's try this save our service worker file and let's hope that it will work for the first time and what we could do first is uncheck this and let's just clear the site data for now okay um, service worker let's just refresh our page okay um, home okay so we're getting all the resources that we want and then if we go here inside our about um, page we have this right 
and um, let's try to make this offline and then refresh our page okay so as you can see here we have this particular output even if our application is offline so basically um, we also save the resources for our uh, about section right here and if we check um, for the cache so we have here the dynamic cache and um, basically now we only have this particular cache items right here and we set the limit of this particular um, cache into five items only so whenever it uh, exceeds five items it's uh, it will try to delete that so that um, we will have a limited uh, size of our cache okay so I think uh, that's all there is to it in this video tutorial and in the next video we're gonna have to um, make use of the form new contact and then we're going to use the firebase database so that we can save our um, users or contacts right here because i believe currently we're just setting the contacts uh, statistically or statically uh, we're doing that manually so we need to uh, fetch the contacts coming from our firebase and we're gonna set up that in the next video so if you're excited please watch the video and if you are new here in our youtube channel you can subscribe and you can press the notification bell so you'll get updated whenever we have a new upload so thank you for watching guys and see you in the next video